Hey there, this video is gonna be about the dynamic range of the Nikon Z8 and how it compares with the Canon R5C and the OG Red Komodo. And before we get into it, I just have to have a huge thank you to b &H Photo who lent me the Nikon Z8 to test review and make videos like this for all of you. If you're looking to pick up some camera gear, I recommend you check out b &H Photo. It's where I buy most of my stuff from. And there are links in the description for the Nikon Z8 and all the gear that I use on a regular basis. So big thank you to b &H for making videos like this possible. Okay, I wanna take a moment to talk about dynamic range testing in general. Now, I've talked about this in previous videos, but I realize a lot of you watching this may be finding my channel for the first time, so welcome. Or you haven't seen all of my videos, which is completely understandable. So there are actually, in my opinion, three ways that you should test dynamic range. And I think it's important to use all three of these to get a big picture idea of how the dynamic range of a camera works and its capabilities. So, like I said, there are three ways, two of which I can test, one of which I can't test. So the two ways that I like to test the dynamic range, the first way is actually looking at an image, taking a look at a scene that has a high amount of dynamic range and seeing how the camera performs. And it's very easy to compare cameras like that as well. And the example that I always like to use is I stand in a dark room next to a bright window. So you have the bright highlights and the dark shadows. You can take a look and see how well it captures the dynamic range of a shot like that. The next one is the latitude or push-pull test. And I think there's a lot of misconception about this. This is not to see if you can overexpose or underexpose an image by five stops. I think that's what a lot of people think. Now, usually when you are testing dynamic range, you're trying to see how much information from highlights to shadows you can capture in one shot. But when we expose properly, we can then reach into the highlights and into the shadows and observe the char characteristics of the highlights and shadows at the extreme ends of the camera's dynamic range. And when we do this, we really wanna take a look at how the noise and the colors look. Now, the third test is a computer test, and that's done with sp uh, certain hardware and software. So tools like the DSC Labs Xyla 21 and the Imitest software. I know a lot of you guys are probably familiar with these tests that Cine D and Gerald Dunn do. I would absolutely love the opportunity to be able to get a analytical test result for dynamic range for these different cameras. But unfortunately, the tools are very expensive and I can't afford them right now. I reached out to DSC Labs, but they haven't gotten back to me. I would absolutely love the opportunity to be able to conduct those tests and include that here and get those results to all of you, but I can't. So what we will be doing is taking a look at those other two tests for dynamic range, and I think they will give us a pretty good sense of what's going on in these cameras. Now, in terms of the testing parameters, when I test different cameras, I always like to use the same lens. So I use my trusty Sigma Art 28 millimeter lens on all the cameras. Now, when I took these into post, I was edit I edited this in Resolve. I used all the conversions in the RAW tab for the RAW um, codex. And then I used the color space transforms for the non-RAW codex to get the images into a Rec. 709 log profile. And then I just graded them manually to get exposure, contrast, and saturation to match. I am not going for color matching with these examples here. I will cover image quality and color in future videos. Now let's go on to the tests. Like I said, the first way to take a look at dynamic range is looking at an actual image of a scene with high dynamic range. And for this, what I do is I expose for the highlights to make sure I'm not clipping the highlights. And then what I'll do is raise the shadows in post and see what's going on. So starting off with the Nikon Z8 8.3K NRAW against Canon R5C's 8.2K RAW ST. Now right off the bat, I feel like they look pretty similar. And if you look out the window onto the porch there, the highlights do look fairly similar. Both are quite noisy since they are raw images and there is no noise reduction applied, but there is this horizontal banding and you can see this in the shadows of the R5C and you can definitely see it on my shirt. Now zooming in, the noise is definitely a little bit more extreme on the R5C and what I notice here about the noise in the shadows is that the chroma noise is more green on the Z8 and more red on the R5C. Now, when I did my low light testing video, which I'll leave linked down below, I definitely saw this as well in the chroma noise. So here I'd say that the Z8 appears to have better shadows and overall probably a little bit more dynamic range in the R5C. So I know not everybody wants to shoot in RAW all the time, including myself, because the file sizes are really large and sometimes it's tough on your computer to edit. So I always like to test out the internal compressed 10-bit codecs and see how they handle uh, the dynamic range here. I also tested this in my low light video. So for this one, we're gonna be comparing the Z8's H.265 10-bit versus the R5C's XF AVC. 
So taking a look at the compressed codecs here, I do want to point out a little bit of a difference in that when you're recording raw in the R5C, it's recording raw and then interpreted as C-Log2. And in this case, we're actually recording in C-Log3. Now the Z8 has automatic noise reduction that you cannot change or turn off. And I left the R5C's noise reduction at automatic for this test because I thought it would be comparable. Same thing I did in my low light video. Now, similar to the rock comparison, we're still getting that horizontal banding on the R5C. And with this zoomed in look, taking a look at the shadows, you can see the R5C's noise reduction is working really well, but you still have that banding going on. The Z8's noise reduction looks blockier and more smeary. And I definitely saw this in the low light tests as well, but just wanna take a look and compare the internal compressed codecs here. All right, so this is where it gets pretty interesting. <laughs> Comparing the Z8's NRAW versus the Red Komodo's R3D. This is in the 6K 17 by nine MQ. Now, although the sun was changing while I was running these tests, I do think that the Z8 has a little bit better highlights here, which you can see out of the windows. And we will verify this with the latitude test. Now I didn't adjust any of the colors here, but I find it interesting that my face is more red on the Z8 than the Komodo where it's a little bit more green. It's kind of just the colors of the cameras. But when you look at the shadows, the shadows on the Z8 are more green from that chroma noise than the red Komodo. And I think overall here, when you take a look at these two images, especially when you're zoomed in here and looking at the shadows, I think the Komodo does perform better than the Nikon in the shadows. It's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more detail, but we'll verify this all again with the latitude tests. And for completion's sake for this video, I do also want to compare the Nikon's NRAW versus the internal compressed H.265 10-bit to see if there's any differences going on here. I'd say the images look pretty similar right off the bat. The highlights look pretty similar, but there's definitely a difference in the shadow noise. So zooming in, you can see the noise reduction going on here. There is less chroma noise going on with the H.265, but you get that blockier and more smeary pattern with the noise reduction in the H.265. So just wanna show you the differences between the two codecs on the Z8. Now onto the latitude test, also known as the push-pull test. So the way I did this is I exposed the cameras using a gray card based on the manufacturer's recommendations. I talk about this in depth in my low light video about the Z8, but we wanna set the Z8 zebras to 95. I know it's weird, but it's a scale of zero to 255. If you wanna see about that, like I said, go check out the low light video. And for the red Komodo, I use the traffic lights in false color and I use false color on the R5C. I then overexpose the image by adjusting the aperture, and then I just adjust the exposure in post and then compare the different cameras. First up is the Z8's NRAW versus the R5C's RAW, and for most cameras that I test and review in this price range, they're usually holding really well through four stops over and they break at five stops, and this is no different. So taking a look here at four stops over, you'll see that the cameras are holding really well. But once you hit five stops, that's when we start to see a little bit of difference, and I have to give a slight advantage here to the R5C. Now take a look at the underexposure test at one stop under, they're both okay. Once you hit two stops, you start to see a difference between the two cameras with the Z8 definitely performing better in the shadows. So overall, just with that slight advantage of the highlights to the R5C, the Z8 is much stronger in the shadows. And I'd have to say that overall, the Z8's NRAW has more dynamic range than the R5C's RAW ST. All right, onto the uh, Z8's NRAW against the Komodo's R3D like we were testing before. And this is no different than the last latitude test. They are both gonna hold really well through four stops and we'll see if we see a difference at five stops here. So here we are at four stops and I apologize for it being out of focus. Uh, but once you hit five stops, you might see a little bit of an advantage here for the Z8, which was what I noticed uh, with that other test. So with the underexposure test, you know, starting at zero and one stop under, they look fine. At two stops, we start to see a difference here with the red Komodo definitely pulling ahead with better shadow performance, in my opinion, than the Z8. More detail, less color shift, less noise. So I definitely have to say here that the Komodo definitely performs better in the shadows with the Nikon Z8 performing just a little bit better in the highlights. So I do have something else to point out about that comparison because it definitely looked like the Komodo's shadows were way cleaner than the shadows in the Z8. So one thing I noticed, which I didn't even realize it was a thing until after this testing and all the editing, but I wanna bring this up as to make this video as complete as possible and give you as much information as I can. Now, when you bring R3D footage into Resolve in the raw tab of Resolve, there's actually a box there to check off for chroma noise reduction. 
and this is on by default and you actually have to turn it off. And this actually uses the raw data that it gets from the R3D and applies the chroma noise reduction. And it makes a huge difference here. So I just wanna show you what it looks like with that turned off. So here's the last comparison that I just showed you, but this time with the chroma noise reduction turned off on the Komodo. These, this makes these two cameras a lot closer in my opinion, but I do think overall the Komodo is better in the shadow since this is a feature that is using the raw data from the sensor and being applied automatically in the raw tab, tab of Resolve. The Z8 is not able to do this, but of course you can obviously add separate noise reduction to both images. But like I said, because this is a built-in feature of the raw codec and how it works in Resolve, I do have to give an advantage, like I said earlier, to the Komodo in the shadows. So for completion's sake, I just wanna also share with you the Z8's NRAW versus the Z8's H.265 10-bit. And they look very similar here in the highlights, really no surprises here. And I, I just, the images look very similar. Both good till four stops over. And once you get to five stops, the image starts to break and they look very similar here. Now onto the underexposure test. This is where it gets interesting because the H.265 has noise reduction built in and it does some different kinds of things. One stop under, they look very similar. Two stops under, there's a color shift in the raw shadows from the chroma noise, what the noise reduction is taking care of in the H.265. Definitely a color shift here at three stops. On the four stops and up, things get really weird. With the H.265, there's like a swirly, almost lava lamp style noise pattern in the shadows. All right, onto my conclusions. First of all, I do wanna say that you can do a lot of great work with any of these cameras. Also keep in mind that the Red Komodo at the time of recording this came out about four years ago, so it's definitely a little bit older of a camera than Nikon Z8 is a lot newer. Based on the tests and what I've shown you in this video, I would say that the Z8 has more dynamic range than the Canon R5C, especially because of that weird horizontal banding in the shadows, but there's definitely more dynamic range in the Z8 than the R5C. And when you talk about the Komodo versus the Z8, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. I think the Komodo is similar in dynamic range to the Z8 or it just barely beats it. And I mean, just barely. So I have to give a slight edge, like I said earlier, to the Komodo for dynamic range over the Z8, but they're very, very close. Now, before everyone gets all worked up and says, I'm just gonna buy a Z8 because it's just as good as my Komodo or whatever, keep in mind there are a lot of different aspects that make a camera better for your use case than a different camera. Dynamic range is just one of those things. And I think it really shows that in this day and age of, of the really powerful mirrorless cameras and cinema cameras that we have is that they all have a lot of dynamic range. And like I said, you can do great work with any of these cameras. So I found these results pretty interesting. Hopefully you did as well. If you found value in this video, hit subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.